Welcome to Rogue Trader. Please read the disclaimer and remember that prices can go down as well as up. Welcome to the Greta Gold Roundup. These are a bunch of renewable stocks which I've been looking at this year as a way of investing into the massive mania there is around renewable energy. You just have to turn on the TV to see how crazy everyone is for environmentalism at the moment. But over the course of 2020, there was a number of real tangible announcements made by the world governments that show that there really is a reason for lots of money to be flooding in to the renewable sector. In January 2020, the EU announced the Green New Deal. This was them actually spending a quarter of the EU budget on climate change. Can you believe that? That amounted to about one trillion to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. In November 2020, Joe Biden was elected and he's pledged to spend 1.7 trillion. And Boris Johnson announced that he'd be putting a trillion into renewables in November 2020. So there's clearly a lot of government intervention going on to help push the world into renewable energy. When I look at total energy use in the UK, we see that the current culprits are natural gas and oil. And the natural gas is mostly for electricity and heating people's houses, whereas the oil is mostly for people driving cars. So it seemed quite clear that the, good, that the best things to invest in would be wind farms, because that's the majority of renewable energy in the UK, and electricity transmission, you know, the fact that they're going to have to be doing all this grid rebalancing, completely overhauling the national grid. There's also a lot of talk of hydrogen, but my research so far has seen very little actual implementation of it, only a kind of startup projects. So the first thing I noticed when I began screening through these Greta Gold stocks was that I've actually already missed the Greta Gold rush. Now, in, the tw in 2020, it would have been possible to invest in a lot of these stocks before the price absolutely boomed and you could have sold some and been quite happy. But unfortunately, it looks like I'm too late to the party and I've missed the gold rush. So, yeah, so it was quite apparent early on when doing this series that most of these stocks are probably overpriced now. Now, I went onto several websites, and this is one example, the London Stock Exchange website, and you can do a stock filter. And I used various stock filters to come up with a short list of Greta Gold picks. I then used Reuters to go through each of these picks, and you can look at the balance sheet and check out what the debt situation is. And you can go on the income statement and look for a good trend in revenue, a good trend in net income. And this way you can eliminate any of the real bad cases quite quickly and quite early on. So that left me with these stocks. And I, d I decided that I would spend about five hours on each one to again filter out the worst ones. And if you look, you can see I did this series of stock blitz videos. So that was me whittling through that short list. And that then left only six stocks. And here are the six stocks that I thought were the best from that original short list. So National Grid run the entire UK National Grid. And because of this, they are an excellent way of investing into the electrification that's going to be required. The complete rewiring of our whole electrical grid. Unfortunately, their numbers didn't really catch my imagination. And in the end, I decided to stay away from them because I think that although in the longer term, they will be a great beneficiary of all these electric cars and stuff. In the shorter term, they're going to have to invest a lot of money in upgrading the network in CapEx expenditure. So it's going to be a slightly traumatic period for them in the near term. So I decided to walk away from them. So I didn't even put them in my watch list. Scottish and Southern Electricity are very interesting to me because they hit both my main, both the main planks of my investment strategy for renewables. They're investing massively into renewable generation. Plus, obviously, they're going to be heavily involved in reconnecting the whole electricity network to support EVs and to support renewable energy. 
So it's fundamentally very compelling for me to invest in them. The last few years, they've been doing a lot of disposals and moving money around to try and pay for this new investment into renewable energy. Um, I just did a very detailed video on them because they've only just released their full year 2021 results. And, you know, their numbers aren't amazing. The clear thing with Southern Scottish Electricity is that they've got this 7.5 billion capex investment plan to invest in this renewable energy and then also that in two point and 2.8 billion of that includes what they're going to have to do to completely reconfigure the electricity network so it all came down to this i found that they were very stretched in order to cobble together the 7.5 billion and I was kind of thinking that I would still go for them because they are such a clean hit on my main investment idea. But then I considered that the price of copper has doubled in the last year. And I really do worry about them actually being able to build all those assets for 7.5 billion. I'm worried that with inflation, with, with uh, the price of copper doubling, one of the main things they do is putting copper wires in the ground i've decided to hold back from them i think there's a lot of investment pain going for them and, and these costs could increase not only with inflation and in copper prices but if for example there's delays and uh, an expected increase in costs for their wind farm projects so it's well worth for me waiting out the next few years because then the main gains for them won't be until about 2026 anyway. So although they were a direct hit on my investment rationale, I decided to wait out the short term pain and then hopefully invest in the next year or so ready for the longer term gain. So Scottish and Southern Electricity are on my watch list and I need to wait for a bit of de-risking before I actually purchase them. Greencoat UK Wind are effectively an investment fund which are structured as an equity and all they do is they've got this big pile of cash and they go around buying wind projects. It was quite clear to me that I'm not sure that they get an amazing deal when they buy these percentages of these uh, wind projects off other people who've already built them. So they haven't even made it onto my focused watch list i've got them on my longer term watch list i've just got them there uh, you know if there is a massive stock market crash or something i might then take a look at them itm power are a play on the hydrogen and everyone is obsessed with using hydrogen to help solve the energy problem of transforming over to renewables they have very impressive partnerships particularly with lind who you might know as bock gas and SNAM. There is actually a network of, um, of new use cases, of actual uses that are being built up with various projects. But ultimately, the majority of their income is from government subsidies. A lot of that is capturing some of this four trillion that's being given away. All the same, they're not really existing as a profitable company in their own right. You know, you're only investing in them in the hope of future growth. And ultimately, this company is hideously overpriced. So I really like them, but still they just remain on my watch list. And they're not even on my main watch list either. I've just got them there to keep an eye on them. But the price is going to have to go down a lot before I would then have a serious look at them. Ceres Power Holdings manufacture steel solid oxide fuel cells. And these are used to convert methane or hydrogen into electricity. These are very impressive in the number of large projects they've already got set up. And they've got big partnerships with Bosch, Dusan and Weiche in China. Now, all of these are actually involving the use of methane. And I look at these as a good pragmatic potential way forward you know i feel like everyone's talking about hydrogen and stuff and wind power but it, it does but it does interest me that that people will turn to this kind of technology as a better solution in fact a pragmatic better solution they've got a very impressive increasing network of projects where big companies all around the world are actually using their technology 
and and manufacturing real product at a large scale. And really, this sets them apart from most of the other renewable stocks where there wasn't really anything real you could see apart from stuff funded by the government. They're absolutely flush with cash and they've got an impressive increase in revenues. However, the disappointing thing was that their operating costs keep going up. And this is mainly because of research and development spend. After I did my video on them, I had a very welcome comment from TL Vision, who he pointed out that the R&D spend is actually discretionary spend. And so that meant, although I was being negative towards them because of these high operating costs, if they wanted to, they could have not spent that R&D. And then they would, in fact, be a profitable company. Now, having looked into this, I think that TL Vision is partially right. Some of this spending is discretionary. However, some of it is not discretionary. When I listened to the latest analyst webcast, someone actually posed a question on the Wide Shade deal and asked, how much money are you spending on R&D in order to support that deal? And so it's clear that for these for all these deals they actually have to do some r d expense to develop the product ready for tech transfer and then after the tech transfer has happened that's when they get these big milestone payments back so in fact some of these operating costs are discretionary r d and some non-discretionary r d so i then plotted how much of this r d was for their current product pipeline and how much is it for their future projects They're actually investing in doing hydrogen electrolyzers. They're actually investing now in hydrogen electrolyzers. And interestingly enough, they're saying that their hydrogen electrolyzers are more efficient than ITM's PEM electrolyzers. But this is going to mean absolutely massive R&D spend the next few years. So I plotted it out. And I think that without all this new research they're going to have to do for the hydrogen, and also expanding their methane product line, they would actually be making a profit in a few years, but not that amazing a profit, but they would be making a profit. All this R&D spend, they're going to be going to some quite crazy looking losses in terms of net income. And so really in summary, I think they are, the base business is very strong. And it's a question of what happens with this 181 million They're flush with cash because of all these fundraisers. And they're saying that they're going to be using this 181 million mostly for developing new hydrogen electrolyzer products. So what's going to be the bang for the buck here? So what I'd say is um, I'm very interested in them. And I'd say I'm slightly more interested in them after the insight that TL Vision provided, which I then looked into. But then we've got to consider the share price. And so I've decided um, that that quite clearly there's been a bubble that's burst here. This was the Greta Gold Rush, the same with all the other stocks, and it's kind of getting a bit more sensible now. And I plan to wait out the technicals in the first instance before probably investing in them later this year. So yes, I'm hoping that at a lower price, I would be interested in investing them later this year. The best one I've found, I think, to invest in now. And so they're pride in place on my watch list just below Frontier Developments. And finally, we have Tecmar Group, who are very interesting as a play on renewable energy in the form of offshore wind farms. They do the cable protection systems for those wind farms. They also seemed a reasonable price. I mean, unlike all the other Greta Gold that have been skyrocketing, you can see they've been, their share price has only been going down since they IPO'd in 2019. So unfortunately, when I looked at their numbers, there was a reason for this. And their revenues have actually been dropping in the last year. And actually, only yesterday, they came out with their full year report. So I went through and hurriedly updated my, um, my, my numbers for them. And in fact, the results that were only released yesterday came out a lot worse than expected when I'd done that video. So their revenues really are down significantly. And whereas they were making a 2 million profit last year, 
they're now 2 million net income drop. And like I covered in the video, they seem a little bit short of cash at the moment, like they're running on gas. They've got like a, um, a 3 million loan that they've got to pay this year. And they've only got 4 million in cash. So for Techmar Group, my feelings are the same as, the, as for the video I did recently. I want to wait out their technicals. You know, the financial situation is even more uncertain than it was. Their CEO left only a few years ago, and then now their chief financial officer has left the company. Their CFO leaving was only announced yesterday. So I'm certainly going to wait on them for a good while. I'm still in my watch list, but I'm, I'm definitely going to wait and watch them for a while before I'll be going into them. So here's my final watch list and I've added three renewable stocks. So overall, this was a lot of work going through these renewable stocks. A lot of money's come rushing into this corner of the room. They're very fashionable and the money's been exiting stuff like oil stocks and commodity stocks and then rushing into the renewable sector. And so I've, I've been faced by the problem that most of them are overpriced. I've been unable to out and out buy a renewable stock. I've got Ceres Power Holdings as one, a very speculative one as well, actually, that I still kind of want to buy later in the year once the technicals play out. And then a nice safe stock, SSE. Um, I'm very interested in buying them, but I think I need to wait out a year or two for some of their teething problems as they move into renewables to uh, play out. So that completes my Greta Gold roundup, and I hope you've enjoyed this video.